Hey everybody, I'm Sam Dunn. It's good to be here. This is Blaine Smith. And we are here to review our and others' favorite metal albums of 2019. How you feeling about it, Blaine? You know, it was a tough, it was a tough year. It was a tough year to decide. A lot of great records, but didn't have that standalone. But we'll get to that in a second, uh, just before we get there. Uh, as always, uh, you know, it's been a great year for you guys supporting us on Patreon. We did some cool things, and we've got some really cool things coming next year. I know you're really excited about Lockhorns. You've been like, where is it? What is it? Are you guys, did you guys take all our money and run? Lockhorns is coming. It'll be coming in January. We just wanted to, you know, record more than one episode for you guys so that we could put it up and then it could keep happening regularly. And you know, all of that is really exciting, but what's more exciting is that you got a haircut. I know, right? It Look was, at that. Look at them you know, curls. You know, it was, you know, you gotta, you gotta be ready for the new year coming at you. But anyway, enough about hair. Uh, we're here to talk about metal. And we'll get to all the other Banger TV peoples and their favorites in a moment, but uh, we're gonna start uh, with our own. Yeah, a bit of a weird year in metal in the sense, I mean, I, I, we had some big releases from some big bands, namely Tool, Slipknot, and then it seems like a lot of more underground, more extreme stuff in and amongst uh, all the releases. And I think for me, it was a really tough year to pick a favorite because it just seemed like there were a lot of good metal records this year, but there was no metal record that really stood out. Like last year, Rivers of Nile for me was really a standout, you know, uh, prior to that I really came around on famously or infamously on Mastodon, Emperor of Sand. It ended up being my favorite record and I think prior to that maybe was Abbott's new record because it was exciting that Abbott was out on his own. Point is that in previous years it's been easier yeah. for me to, to pick out uh, a, a clear favorite. So I've got three records that I really liked this year, and I think just depending on how I feel when I get up in the morning, which one's my favorite. First off, I actually really liked the Whitechapel record. Yeah, Whitechapel for me, it was a band that, you know, honestly I hadn't really paid a lot of attention to until recently, the last couple of records, and I think The Valley is a super strong record and really uh, dynamic and really accomplishes a lot. My other favorite, and it's barely a metal record, <laughs> would have to be Opeth's new record, just simply because I think Michael Ackerfeld is one of the most talented people on the planet and continues to write really strong music, but now obviously abandon the growling vocals, abandon even a lot of heavy riffing now, but in any case, Opeth, Opeth is always there for me. But I thought I'd put my, uh, my chips on my favorite album of the year would be The Ultimus uh, record, Something Wicked Marches In. Kind of a surprise, yeah. because I always get really nervous about super, super group groups. albums, but I think I said in my review, this is probably David Vincent's best vocal performance of all time, and one of the best extreme metal vocal performances uh, in recent memory. And of course, then you've got Runa on guitar, very distinctive style, and then you can't lose with uh, Flo Mornier on the drums. Yeah, a really strong record with a bunch of musicians that were all strong, but in their different way, and mm -hmm. it all actually blended. It wasn't competing for your attention, competing for your sound, just really uh, what a supergroup should be. It had its own sound, own sound, which I think, again, is hard to achieve when you've got three musicians that come in with such an established sound of their own. Yeah. And what I like about this record is never the biggest Cryptopsy fan. They kind of pushed it over the hill of technicality for me, but bringing it back in with a bit more mid-paced stuff I thought was a really good feel for this group of musicians. So there you go. My favorite record was Ultimus. Good job, boys. Are they gonna go on the road? We're still waiting. Over to you, sir. Yeah, it was a hard year, you know? I feel like every other year um, we've had uh, uh, arguments here about right. who gets to take what record, you know? Rivers of Nile, there was a couple of hands grabbing at it. My pick the previous year, uh, Power Trip, there was a couple mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, no, I want it, no, I want it. Um, but this year, yeah, just everybody's really kind of out there and everybody kind of really went for something a little more uh, underground, as you'll mm -hmm. see, because, yeah, there wasn't really that 
that record that, you know, felt like a shift, a change. Mm. But that doesn't mean there wasn't a bunch of really enjoyable records. So, my first award is the Ross and Rachel Will They Won't They Award, which goes to Mayenfeld, The Great Adventure. It's uh, some death metal contrasted against some World War One era propaganda. Just a really cool record, you know. And I tried to review it. I tried to include it in Metal Monthly. Things just didn't line up timeline-wise. My next one would be the uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake Award. Uh, this year we've got the Resident Evil 2 Remake, one of my favorite video games of the year. Uh, simultaneously a game I loved as a kid coming back, giving me those old feelings, but in a new, unique way, and that goes to Possessed, Revelations of Oblivion, yep. you know, uh, managed to make a record that was both simultaneously very much a Possessed record yep. and very much uh, a not a rehash or resting on the laurels. So, yep. two great records that I really enjoyed, but picking my best record of the year was difficult. What I did at the end of the day, I just went on my Media Monkey, I picked 2019, and I saw what I played the most and uh, it was a suicidal depressive black metal album so uh, maybe put me on watch next year but uh, none damp chill of life it didn't jump out to me when I was first thinking because it kind of really worked its way into my regular listening as though it's an album I've had for a couple of years just a great washed out you're sad uh, alone on a long drive in rural Canada. If you've ever had to drive back from doing a gig that didn't go so well on your own, and you're like, maybe I'll just uh, slip on the road and die tonight. Um, great record to go along with that. And uh, you know, what better for a year without anything decisive than to go with something that's a total bummer. Enough from us, because as we know, we will go on all day if you let us. Let's see what everyone else has to say. Here's Brad with his pick for 2019. Hey, what's up? Bradley here out on my rooftop deck. I'm freezing my ass off. I'm not even wearing any shoes. And the only reason that I'm doing it is so that I can tell you my number one album of this year. Brand of Sacrifice dropped an album called God Hand on Unique Leader Records, and it is just awesome. The hottest sound in deathcore right now is slamming deathcore. And these guys utilize slamming elements in their deathcore sound, but they don't let it really define it. Sure, there are slams, and yes, there are gutturals, and Kyle's vocals are just, like, very expansive. They just go all over the place. The dude has a hell of a range. And the band takes that range and complements it with a similarly diverse music. Yes, they have slams, and yes, they have deathcore elements, death metal elements, etc. But they complement it with, like, this groovy new metal undertone in songs like Charlotte and Fortress that really give them more for you to chew on. For me, Brand of Sacrifice is definitive for my 2019. I started out the year doing a massive interview for them that ended up being my first ever feature for Kerrang! And since then, I've really enjoyed watching the band grow from taking over the Billboard Heat Seekers charts to slaughtering on Summer Slaughter. It's really nice to see a band based in Toronto, that's the CN Tower back there, just absolutely demolish. That all culminated when I was in their music video for The Branded as a kidnapped torture victim. But before all of that, God Hand was just an album that I loved for its fresh take on Deathcore. Deathcore has had a massive year in 2019, and I truly think that Brand of Sacrifice are going to be one of the more unique bands to push the genre even further in 2020 and beyond. A very Brad release, uh, you know. Hey, hey. What I'll say is the great thing about Banger is we have such a we have a diverse group with diverse tastes. That's some crazy, brutal death metal slam d d insanity that uh, I just uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take take it on me to say I don't get it. It's not them. That's it. They're doing amazing stuff. You know, Brad yeah. uh, has has fantastic taste. You know, yeah. he knows he knows the up and coming, the weird, the unique. Undoubtedly uh, the loudest typewriter ever on drums. That's you know that that's a uh, that's a lot it's a lot of drums <laughs> in a very short period of time. And I like drums, but you know I want my drums a little more human. <laughs> Maybe was... superhuman. I'll take superhuman, but still human. Anyway, so uh, this is how this goes. <laughs> uh, we talk about all the stuff we like and c try to convince you about how it's actually the best. And then all the other reviewers do the thing, and then we kind of just take the piss. So second up is uh, Sarah. Hey everyone, it's Sarah. I've been instructed to talk about my favorite albums of 2019 as fast as I can, so here goes. Favorite records? Keys of Orthnack, 
A Battle in the Dark Lands of the Eye. This is a Canadian black metal band, very inspired by Lord of the Rings. You should dig it. Atlantean Codex, I gave my first ever five out of five. This is The Course of Empire, beautiful epic doom. Idle Hands, mana, putting fun back into heavy metal. Who knew you could still do that? Everybody just hates each other. Lunar Shadow, The Smokeless Fires. This is a German, beautiful, proggy, deathy, traddy, metal-y, bandy. Let's go for that. Uh, Grendel's Sister. This one is super strange. Myrtle Wreath, I highly recommend you listen to Grendel's Sister. Gonna also say, Solicitor, EP, best. Dionysiac, demo, best. Marth, Sisters of Darkness, best. But the two best albums of 2019, without a doubt. First up, I have to talk about Iron Griffin, Curse of the Sky. This is a Finnish traditional heavy metal band. They just got a vocalist who sounds like she could direct an army into battle. It's kind of like Warlord. It's kind of like uh, Lordian Guard, but it's incredible. And now for my number one album of 2019, it's Mirror, Pyramid of Terror. This is a Cypress-based traditional heavy metal band. They sound like they really love 70s era scorpions. And uh, the song Running From The Law, literally a scorpion song. It's fucking amazing. Listen to this band. You can also listen to Altar of Oblivion, Departure Chandelier, the new album by Cavalier. We've got heavy metal. There's lots of good shit in 2019. Look into the underground. That's where the best stuff is, I promise you. Yeah, I mean, there you go. There is proof that metal is alive and diverse. I mean, yeah. you take Brad's pick up against Sarah's pick, and you, you, it's hard to believe these, these bands even exist in the same music universe yeah. as each other. But uh, I haven't checked out the, the Mirror record, but I'm into that. You yeah. know, I love my Dio. I love my, with, with you know, some selection. You know, my, my early Nawabum, it's, it's cool. Give it, you know, Sarah, in a classic Sarah move, A, found, somehow managed to find a band that I didn't even hear about releasing a record this year, uh, as is very Sarah, and of course, she picked 10 albums, you know? <laughs> uh, imagine Sophie's Choice, you can only pick 10 of your favorite children. Oh boy, this is gonna be a hard list. I think picking 10 <laughs> would've been a lot easier than picking one this year. Yeah, but yeah, you know, this is, uh, this is uh, a little, a little bit more my speed. You know, like I always say, when stuff like, when I pick stuff like that for Metal Monthly, if a tune sounds good to drive to, that's, that's your a litmus good tune. test. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, Sarah. Next up will be uh, no less mystifying. Uh, we'll all be reaching for our our, our metal history books yeah. <laughs> on this one. The inimitable Professor Popoff. Hi, Martin Popoff here. My favorite album for 2019 is the Lord Weird Slow Fag New Organon, or Organon. It's a, kind of a strange title, well, strange band name too. It's their first album in five years, first album back with Cruz del Sur uh, Records, which is kind of a cool creative label that has a lot of this kind of music. Uh, Mike Scalzi, uh, vocals and guitar, he's actually a philosophy prof at Diablo Valley University, so a lot of these lyrics are about philosophy and science and physics and stuff, so it's pretty cool. You know, if, um, if Gillen is the punk rock version of Deep Purple and, uh, and this band, No Means No, is the punk rock version of Rush, uh, Slow Feg, I would say, they're the punk rock version of Iron Maiden. There's, uh, they're, they're definitely very epic. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, people compare them to Brokus Helm or Man of War, and there's a little bit of Thin Lizzy in there with the twin leads. But it's like this sort of, uh, sort of rough, uh, epic, slightly, very, very slightly lo-fi, punchy, aggressive, uh, version, frantic version of, uh, of Iron Maiden, I would say. But yeah, this is just a very cool, uh, you know, I, I guess you could call it sort of a brainiac metal or, bo or bookish metal uh, kind of band, but also very retro. So, so yeah, top album 2019, Lord Weird Slow Feg, New Organon. Don't ever call me a slow fag. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I made him laugh. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> there's, uh, you know, there's a, uh, there, uh, that's definitely a band that I know, a, a, a nice, a nice kind of what's become a classic band in the genre. Mm. Um, you know, still going very strong, still releasing great records. What I find really interesting is uh, not that age matters at all, but you have Martin Popoff <laughs> and Sarah Kitteringham basically kind of living in the same world yeah. in terms of like the sound of metal that they're both gravitating towards and it's proof. It's like as technical 
as, as virtuosic and as dense as metal gets and is getting like more and more year in year, a, a lot of fans are gravitating towards this, this sound Classic that is sound. A, a, a more than deliberate nod yeah. to a sound that came out a long time ago. Next up is undoubtedly um, the Do cutest one? member oh. of the Banger TV <laughs> team. And, uh, Our teen heartthrob. May out sincere all of us, and we're all pretty fucking sincere here because we're Canadian. Our man Dylan. Hi everyone, Dylan Gowan here. So for my top pick of 2019, it has to be Empath by Devin Townsend. He continues to be one of the most influential musicians within metal, and this album, Empath, has to be his most ambitious project to date. What I love about this album is how unpredictable the songwriting is throughout, especially on tracks like Genesis, Hear Me, and Borderlands. Those three tracks in particular really highlight the dynamics that is placed throughout this whole entire album. How one track can just jump from death metal to ambient to jazz, and it all flows really well. This album also includes many guest appearances by Steve Vai, Anup Sastry, uh, Morgan Agrin, and the list just goes on and on and on. And even Chad Kroger is on this release, but I'll admit he did a good job on it. So if you haven't checked out Empath by Devin Townsend, I highly recommend checking it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in 2020. God bless him, Devin Townsend like literally demonstrates that metal has no bounds whatsoever. This is this is a night at the opera. This is yeah. a night with Mr. Bungle. This is a night with a lot of different sounds. I can't even get inside that head. I know, right? Right? Like the head that produces that is a head I will never understand. It's it's like when it's like when you like walk into MIT and there's just all this math on the chalkboard and you're like, look, I'm assuming you're right, but I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you you don't know what you're doing because I have no yeah. idea what you're doing. Yeah. I don't understand it, but Dylan does, and that's all that matters. Okay, last up, we've got uh, Mr. Thrash. Yeah. Mr. Thrash himself, Daniel DK. Hey guys, it's Daniel Decay. Picking your favorite record of the year is really, really difficult. I'm gonna give it a shot. Coming into my number one slot, we have Tenneth in Another Time. It's an awesome, melodic, Hard rock heavy metal project features Russ Tippins from Pariah and Satan. It's got a split female and male vocal, anthemic, totally wild stuff, atmospheric as well. Check it out. My runner up pick, very close hard decision, is Vulture, Ghastly Waves and Battered Graves. They're a German speed and thrash metal band. It's their first release on Metal Blade. Before I get out of here, three honorable mentions Bewitcher, Under the Witching Cross, Pounder, Uncivilized, and Destruction, Born to Perish. Well, I stand corrected. DK, put you in a pigeonhole there, painted you in as Mr. Thrash, but that's a little different. Hey, did uh, Sarah and Martin's picks and Brand uh, DK's picks get switched in the mail? Hey, we can go back to that joke. Yeah. Boy, yeah, just a, just a real year for uh, traditional heavy metal, I yep. guess. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, Metal Fleetwood Mac there from DK, not what I would have expected, you know? Definitely. Does that mean he's gonna find love soon? Is his heart softening? Uh, who knows? I had I'm, my money on Death Angel. <laughs> I, I thought it would have been Death Angel or something in that that vein. Even maybe the Ultimus record, because I knew he liked that record. We talked a lot about it when it came out. I, you know, I feel like it was kind of a year where there, because there wasn't that stamp, we all got to just kind of like be like, okay, I'm not obligated to pick anything from like a sense of like journalistic integrity. So let's just go whole hog. We're we're off road and get the ATVs out. Yeah. But speaking of which, I mentioned this earlier, I find it interesting, none of us picked Tool, Slipknot, uh, Behemoth, Dream Theater, there's probably some other big ones I'm, I'm missing, and I, I, I don't know, like, what do you think's going on there? I, I mean, I've always felt that a lot of the times what happens is when a, when a band gets to a certain level, they can put out great music, but the chances of that music really like resonating with you on mm -hmm. like a daily kind of listen level yep. kind of goes down a bit. Because, you know, at some point to appeal to 100,000 people versus 10,000 people, you got to get a little less specific. If well, and I think also bands. we're all searching for something that's new. Uh, yeah even if it sounds old, <laughs> which is old really new. kind of interesting. Like three of the picks are definitely, you know, huge 
uh, uh, parts of the sound are coming from, you know, music that was made like four decades ago. So it's like we are looking for new ways of reinterpreting the past yeah. and maybe that's what's resonating. But yeah, I find it interesting. But what will be exciting is when we pick our favorite records of the decade. Yeah. Because I think then that's going to be a little tougher. So yeah, what better note to end it on than a, a segue to another video that will be out shortly as well, you know? It's the end of 2019, but it's also the end of the, the 20 teens. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because, well, Banger TV started like three, four years ago, so we've never looked back any mm. further right. than a year. So anyway, yeah, thanks for joining us for another year of metal on Banger TV and for uh, sitting through our, our favorite albums of the year. Another strong year from bands both big and emerging. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us on Overkill. See you next time.